Welcome back to the lab. It's not a bad looking VG30 DET, wait. VG30 DE needs something else, doesn't it? Before it goes in that machine that's quietly waiting in the background that I'm trying to avoid showing the license plate. Not that it matters too much. On the bench here, they arrive, they come back. So these, hmm, how do I describe these? First of all, let's turn some lights off so the camera stops flickering. One day I'll get this all figured out so we can just roll through seamlessly without any screw-ups. Never mind. So, the actual cores, uh, the core and the turbine wheels, Garrett GT 2860 RS, it's disco potato cores. The front wheels are actually Garrett GT 2560R compressor wheels so that we can use the front covers, which are conveniently still stored away, not on my clean, tidy bench. These have been away to Mr. Steve Merch, and they've been re-kitted and balanced and everything, so they are better than second-hand turbos, but they are not brand new turbos. Now, depending on factory uh, workers and all that sort of carry on, it's possible they are better than brand new but we won't go into that. What we need to go into is fitting those onto there. That there thing there. So we're going to start with the exhaust housings because they're a fixed thing. You can't clock those any differently because they have to go onto this flange here. So I'll bolt them onto there and then we can put the center rotating housing assembly. CRHA is what they call them from the in the, in the turbocharger terminology we'll stick that in the front there and put a couple of plates and bolts in there so it can't rotate then we'll take it off put it on the bench do the rest of the bolts up and then we'll start looking at putting the front cover on and when we've done that we'll figure out what we're doing with the waste gates because that's all going to change from where it was back in the day stuff everywhere let's spot the missing o-ring Need one more of those big ones, there'll be one kicking around somewhere. Um, so I've started putting these, let's call them adapter plates, it goes in between the core and the compressor housing, because the these are not cleaned yet by the way, the compressor housing, this area here, significantly larger than this area here, it's just the way they do it. So this is a, effectively it's an adapter, goes in here like that, sorts that out. Now it was interesting, these were, oh, I'm going to struggle to be able to see them and show you on the camera, these were slightly damaged. I have tidied them up, makes it harder to see, uh, slash impossible to see, there's a little bit here somewhere. Um, they don't actually fit inside here as nicely as they should do, for some reason. It's like something's distorted or they've been dropped or scuffed up or something. I don't recall that being an issue when they were brand spankers. But there's something going on there now. They should be a tight fit, absolutely, but there was some, you can hear that. It's hard to show you, but you can hear it. Um, there were some funny marks. There you go. You can just see them as if they'd been dropped or something weird like that There's certainly some big marks elsewhere so just I've tidied those up a little bit to make that work we're not putting the compressor on first like I said we'll, we'll start at the back putting these on maybe if I drop them it might save hitting the compressor wheel it'll hit this instead <laughs> shouldn't drop things though should we um yep so let's get these on and start putting those in that bit's easy as the two, what are we going to call them, mounting plates, whatever, are on there and all six bolts. So that bit's attached to that bit. That's done. Same on the other side. Hopefully we won't have to move that anymore again. Uh, this, I've got those lights going. You love it, don't you? This is some more of this weird stuff going on here with the adapter plate to compressor housing. You can see it's picked up on there. And just 
it shouldn't be like that. I'm not sure what's going on. There's a couple of spots. Like it should be a tight fit or snug fit, but it shouldn't be picking up and damaging it like that. And that is actually, um, that's burred up in this, this direction towards us. So it's stopping this face from sitting flush on that adapter plate like it should be. Um, same deal on here. So that needs a wee bit of a tickle up. Shouldn't be hard. Get that under control and then we can start looking at getting these onto the See, I did clean them. They look a bit better, right? These are definitely not the ones that I had on the engine. These are definitely replacements, new ones. Because I went through, uh, I called it Jenny Craig for engines. And just anything that didn't have to be there just got Foxtrot Oscared. So I literally went through, ground off all the tabs and things that didn't have to be there. They got chopped off. Just take weight out of it. Which was pointless because those big old beasties are like 1400 and something kgs even with all the weight trimmed out of it as much as you can do so much better deal with the little march okay tidy those up get them on good 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 so they now just slip on and stay there not a press fit or anything you just gently push it on with your hand and that's it. it stays exactly where it needs to be no tight spots or anything so that's good that is well, I'm going to say exactly but it might not be but that's exactly where they go uh, so with these aftermarket manifolds there's a company that makes them there not the one you're thinking of this is a Canadian company there is not a heck of a lot of room to muck around you've got to get it just right you can put a spacer in here and drop them down people have done that um, it's possibly going to cause issues with other things maybe not i'm not going to worry about it it runs like that fine i'm not going to say it's perfect obviously there's a crap ton of heat coming out of here that will go into here there's not much you can do about that if this was clocked around further like this then you get more room the less heat will go into there and you might get to the point where you can get a shield in between the two that'd be great and your compressor outlet is heading to no man's land in a completely useless spot um, a long long time ago i did talk about whether we should be changing these turbos on these motors now since we can get counter rotating turbos and you could actually set this up much much better with a different manifold for the side and a counter rotating turbo so it would be mirror image of you yeah, might nice creaky knees there mirror image of that which is an entirely better setup uh, if you can chop this off you don't need that and you've got heaps more clearance between here and here well you need some of that right because that's a bolt that holds the compressor cover to the adapter plate but you can get rid of a lot of it and um, you definitely could get a shield in between there and there so a slightly different manifold design and a counter rotating turbo and you'd have a much better deal of course you'd need a different downpipe as well so quite an investment to make it work but heaps better deal Okay, so now I'm going to move on. Well, I'll put I'll put some bolts on here because they're just sitting. As I've said, you can press them on by hand, they don't fall off. I'm going to move on to getting these wastegate actuators sorted out. Um, third hand information or some, you know, the guys that destroyed the engine previously made comment about this and said, oh, they got it figured out or something like that. There was a, I can't remember the exact words that came back to me, but it was something to do with it was some sort of weird wastegate thing, but they got it figured out. Well, all you had to do is bolt it back on the way it was, because it was clearly working the way it was. You just had to put it back the same. So there was no figuring out. It was just... But anyway, if they thought this was weird, they would have loved it when I cheated and put some return springs on here and put some tension on the wastegate with a special adapter thing because these blow open at a given PSI right 
and they're really really hard to change in the car they're a pain in the brain so i literally got in there drilled a couple of holes in here put a put a spring on here to put more tension on them i can't remember what the arrangement was on the other side would have been something similar we can't see the mounts there but yeah so that would have freaked them out but never mind so what we're going to do in this new setup that we're going to do is we're going to use the disco potato actuators which are a stronger actuator than the 2560 ones especially these old ones in fact i will try and test them somehow and confirm that uh yep got a plan in my head already and um we'll use the stronger ones those i'm assuming derpy derp it's pretty the knob smashed off this i need to maybe sort that out one day but there you go so regulator teed in same feed into both of them don't you dare come at me and say it'll be different pressure because this is a different length just don't not in the mood for stupid today turn the pressure up have a look for which one moves first None of them apparently have wound the pressure down too far. This is working well, isn't it? There you go. The 2560, the old one. See that's just returned. The other one hadn't moved at all. I don't know what the pressure is. There you go. That's opening. Near enough opened. And this one's still, yeah, it's seated. Good. We'll use those ones. I like it. And um, this gauge is probably talking kaka because I'm pretty sure it's a bit more than zero. <laughs> that says zero. Actually, I do have a gauge. Ooh, let's do that. I've got a gauge that might tell us. Now it's really looking like a bit of a science experiment. So it's not much. It's really like very not much at all. It only just comes off the stop. Being fair about it, that's with no preload on anything. So it's a bit different when it's installed on the turbo and it's loaded up. But old actuators, the 2560 ones, the ones that are original to, not original to the car, but... The ones that I put on this motor a long, long time ago are definitely opening a lot earlier than those with the same amount of preload, which is zero. So we will use these. You're definitely going to have to excuse the mess. It is a work in progress. So if they were confused over the brackets and everything that was in there before, they're going to lose their torque wrench over this lot. That's if they have a torque wrench. In fact, I don't think they do based on what we saw. But that, I think that's all right, isn't it? That's quite lovely. Should be enough room in the car for that to fit. I hope. Be a bit embarrassing if it doesn't. We've got this doofer here. Goes right on there. So the theory is if, if that can fit in between the engine and the chassis, uh, we shouldn't have any problems with our wastegate actuator there. This all needs tidying up and cleaning in these I think that's Samco actually. Um, silicon couplers need to go away. We will put something black or red or whatever. They're damaged anyway, right? See the damage on that one? Um, and there's something, I don't know what's done that. Weird, but something's had a go at that. So they both need to disappear. Uh, that's what you want to see there. 11 psi. Give or take, depends on the accuracy of this gauge. We won't hold it to account. It won't be necessarily 100% accurate. And that's just floating off the seat there. Basic rule of thumb with these cars, or most twin turbo cars anyway, at least, whatever your wastegate actuating pressure is, you can run roughly twice that before you'll start blowing wastegates open. Thereabouts, depending on many, many, many factors, but... 10 psi springs we should be able to get 20 psi out of it no problems and 20 psi with much bigger exhaust turbine housings um, it's going to be many heaps oh, i was worried about the noises that was making I was thinking oh no 
Can you hear that? Well, it's because I've got paper in the front of it, eh? That's okay. We're just going to get a blowout before we put it in the car anyway. That side, done. Now we've got to attack the other side, which has got another... This bracket, I think, will be remade. This one looks as though it's pretty sketchy. I think what ended up happening was it was jammed up against the engine mount or something like that. And we've got a much smaller diaphragm. Should be able to do a nicer job than that this time around. As easy as that. Took three seconds. No trouble at all. Didn't have to modify any engine mounts or anything. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we did. Up in there. Right up in there. A little bit tight in there, but that's fine. It's no problem. It's sorted. It is fitted. Uh, I just, you can hear my knees creaking. They don't like doing this sort of thing. I'm trying to get some light in there without making it too bright. So that rod is bent just to make sure it's got clearance for everything that's in that general area. But that is a better setup than what it had in the past. Um, probably better than the factory setup, to be honest. But that's pretty much good as gold. Obviously, it's just one nut holding. I'll take that away and the light will be better now. Just one nut holding these on. There's no exhaust gasket in here. Um, it's probably test fit in car time to make sure the clocking of this is all exactly right. These things are so tight in the engine bay that you can have it all set up like that thinking that's good, fit it in the car and go, oh no, things are not working the way they should do. So, and we've just got to make sure this actually works in this position here without having a bent rod that is as tight in there as that can be. Uh, it may be that we have to bend the rod, and in which case that's fine. As you can see, there's still plenty of room here to have another set of holes in this direction and trim this all up, move that inboard if we have to. I, I don't think we will, but we will have a look at that when we get there. There should be plenty of room if you look at where the engine mount is in relation to this. It's, it's not a whole lot further out than the actual bolt hole in the subframe and if you look at where the bolt hole in the subframe is down there we've got heaps of room over the chassis rail so we should be fine might be putting that thing back in there tomorrow have to move some of this stuff first alrighty I need to give it a dust off look it's got all dusty oh dear dinner time see you later cheers bye Ooh, Kerbo touches. Mm.